Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. Hello, and in today's video, we will look at the anatomy of the skull. This is one of the most basic topic while starting with anatomy of head and neck region. The human skull has got the most complex anatomy compared to other body parts. It's divided into two parts, a neurocranium and the visrocranium. Neurocranium is the part of the skull which encloses our brain, hence named neurocranium. The bones making up our neurocranium are called cranial bones. On the other hand, visrocranium is the part of the skull over which all our facial soft tissues are attached and the bones making up it are our facial bones. In today's video, we will explore and simplify bones of the neurocranium only. Bones of the visrocranium will be discussed in our upcoming video. So stay tuned and subscribe to the channel so that each time a video is uploaded, you get a notification. So let's draw a skull from a lateral view and look at some anatomic features of the bones making up our neurocranium. Neurocranium or the cranial bones is made up of two paired bones and four single bones, comprising a total number of eight bones. The paired bones are the two temporal and the two parietal bones. Single bones are the occipital, frontal, ethmoid and the sphenoid bone. Let's discuss each bone separately. The frontal bone, as the name suggests, is located at the most front of the skull. The frontal bone makes up the superior, medial and somehow the lateral parts of the orbital plate. In short, the majority of the eye socket is made up of frontal bone. At the superior part of the orbital plate, frontal bone has got a horizontal prominence called the superciliary arch and this is the site where our eyebrows lie. Just down to the superciliary arch and superior to the orbital plate is the supraorbital foramen, through which supraorbital nerve and vessels exit. From a superior view, the frontal bone is attached with the two parietal bones posteriorly at the coronal or frontal suture. Coming to the parietal bone, in Latin, parietal means wall. This bone makes most of the roof and lateral walls of the skull. They are two in number, both of which are attached with each other at the sagittal suture and to the frontal bone at the coronal suture and then to the occipital bone at the lambdoid suture. These sutures, however, in a newborn exist as soft tissue spaces covered by a membrane and are called anterior and posterior fontanelles. Fun tunnels allow for easy exit through birth canal and postnatal growth. The third bone we have are the paired temporal bones. These bones make our temples, the sides of our head, which we massage while having a headache. The temporal bone has got so many features. From a lateral view, it has got a zygomatic process which attaches to the zygomatic bone and makes up the zygomatic arch. A tympanic or ear cavity A mandibular or glenoid fossa where mandibular condyle attaches and forms the temporomandibular joint or TMJ A narrow bony projection called the stylard process where some muscles and ligaments attaches It also contains a petromastoid part and a squamous part the squamous part of the temporal bone is attached to the parietal bone at the squamous suture. The next bone we have is the occipital bone, seen from this posterior view of the skull. In Latin, occipital means back, in that this bone is the most posterior bone of the skull. The features of the occipital bone which we can see in this posterior view is the lambdoid suture where the occipital bone joins with the two parietal bones. The next feature of the occipital bone which we can see here is the bony prominence called the external occipital crest 
and this is the site for attachment of certain ligaments. In order to look at some more features of the occipital bone, we have to flip up the skull and have an inferior view of it. So let's draw a skull from an inferior view. From an inferior view, when the mandible is removed, some important features of the occipital bone seen here are the foramen magnum and the occipital condyles. Foramen magnum is the greatest foramen of the skull through which passes the spinal cord along with vertebral arteries. Lateral to the foramen magnum are located the two occipital condyles. Condyle means a bony prominence which usually attaches with another bone and forms a joint. In case of the occipital condyles, it joins with the superior facet of the first cervical vertebra called atlas forming the atlanto-occipital joint. Coming up next is one of the most complex bones of the skull and that is the sphenoid bone. The sphenoid bone from the lateral view of the skull looks somewhat a very smaller bone in size. But if we explore the skull and remove the upper part or the skull cap and have an internal view of the skull base, we will see that this bone is actually a very wide bone, occupying the base of the cranial cavity from one end to the other. Let's pick up this bone from the skull base and talk about some important features of it. As we can see here, the sphenoid bone is a butterfly-shaped bone having two greater wings and two lesser or smaller wings. This bone consists of some really important foramens. Foramens in the sphenoid bone are listed as the optic foramen where the second cranial nerve or the optic nerve passes. The foramen spinosum where the middle meningeal artery passes and gives blood supply to the meninges foramen rotundum through which passes the maxillary nerve and is the second branch of the trigeminal nerve and finally foramen ovale where passes the mandibular nerve and is the third branch of the trigeminal nerve. Another important structure in the sphenoid bone is the cella tersica. Cella tersica means Turkish saddle. It's a small depression which is entirely occupied by the pituitary gland or the hypophyseal gland known as the major endocrine gland. The last bone we have is the ethmoid bone, seen here from the frontal view of the skull. Starting from the top to the bottom, it has got a crista gully, which is the site of attachment for the fox cerebri. Fox cerebri is a dual partition separating the two cerebral hemispheres. Extending from the crista gully is the perpendicular plate. This plate makes the upper and bony part of the nasal septum. Laterally, it has the orbital plates which makes up the medial walls of the orbits, the middle and superior nasal concha which are the bony projections within the nasal cavity and functions in humidifying and warming the inspired air. The concave can be observed on a coronal cross section of the skull. Let's suppose this is the coronal section of the skull. We can see here are the three concas, which are the inferior nasal concha, the middle and the superior nasal concha. The inferior nasal concha is completely a separate entity and is not related to the ethmoid bone, while the middle and the superior nasal concha belongs to the ethmoid bone. From the superior view on the lateral sides of the crista gully is the cribriform plate. In Latin, cribriform means something having plenty of small holes. These holes in the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone are the passageway for the small sensory fibers of the nasal mucosa, which after passing from these holes turns into olfactory bulb and then the olfactory nerve, which is the cranial nerve number one, responsible for olfaction or the sense of smell. I hope this video helps. Please give a thumbs up if you really like this video and don't forget to subscribe the channel and share it with friends. Plus, if you have got any question or suggestion, you may write them down in the comment box. Thank you for watching.